Hello, everybody. Welcome to Smart Investing. I'm Albert, the host of the channel. So today we're going to continue the banking services sector. And I have about, what is it, either 15 or 16 stocks. So we're going to jump right into this. Uh, as you can see, I already have them up. And we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up to the top. So let's begin. Let's start it off. First one I have is TSCBP, Tri-State Capital Holdings. Uh, as you can see, I want to show, well, I'll show it after I finish all 15 stocks. But as you can see, the past five days, it's been in a downtrend. Show the one year. But again, overall, the market has been in a downtrend. So I'll show the chart. Now for the analysis, what do we have for? Support and resistance. So anyways, we're going to look at the basic info. So we have a uh, 81 million market cap, um, 52 week high of 29, 52 week low of about 24. So you see the difference between these two. It's like a five dollar difference. That really is not much. That's not much of a gap. For the year so we do have this this indicates that it is undervalued but again to gain that much capital just five bucks that's not a lot at all that's that's nothing barely so we're gonna look at the financials real quick let's go see the annual report i do have 2021 estimates thanks to weeble so we have here i'm just going to scroll through this one real quick the debt is really really high i do not like that it's not a good sign let's look at the financials whoa what was that Okay, I see. Have return on equity, about ten percent. ROA, wow, half a percent. Oh, what else we have? Margins, they don't show. Obviously, debt is always high. Uh, net income, did it grow from 2020 to 21? So, it dropped slightly in 2020. They've continued revenue, growth, operation, income. I don't see anything. Uh, cash flow, investing has been negative. Financing positive operations, 85 mil. So, oh, excuse me. So they have cash flow negative. Let's look at the numbers again. Let's see something for dividends. Okay. They pay quarterly dividends on nothing that's growing. Not growing, it's just the same. So then, that's pretty much it I have for this stock. I do not like it. I'm gonna move on to the next one, so I say no for this one. Next up, that I have CVCY Central Vi um, Community Bank Corp. So, the one year. You have it going up, slightly down, looks flat. So, 
Last three months, we have been in a downtrend, but let's see what has been going on. CVCY has been holding up, actually, which is good. The volume is low. The gain between for the 52-week results, we have 16 to 23. That's not even 10 bucks. Um, I will say this, the past three months, stock market has been in a downtrend. So for this company to hold up, that's actually pretty good. Um, but again, that might be just a short term play. So I'm going to look at the one year again. So yeah, they've been holding up. So now let's look at the analysis. We have about, if we were to draw a line, let's say we draw the line there, what, $20.75. So that would be, I guess, the line to break. Now let's look at the financials 2021. Yeah, they do have it. So we're in mid February, so a lot of companies have reported earnings. Late January, starting in February, if they haven't. Usually by February, majority of companies have reported. Definitely by March. Most companies have reported their earnings. So we have here for financials. Revenue and net income. So we see that has grown. Obviously, earnings have grown. That is at 89 compared to other stocks. Now we have fair ROE at, let me move my camera, yep, at 11.5%. So we have. ROA at 1.3. Just gonna skim right through this. The debt has sort of remained the same, so it looks like they're not carrying on more debt, which is a good thing. So it seems like they want to be somewhat stable, I guess. So we can see here they can definitely cover the dividend. No. That can cover that. Why is it not? There we go. So we're going to look at the dividends real quick. So a one penny raise from 2020 to 2021. So it's not much, but it's not bad. Um, so I really, I don't really like this stock, but it seems to be doing okay. It seems to be doing okay the past few months, but overall, I wouldn't invest in this long term. Next up I have is Reliant Bancor, RBNC. Let's look at that. I like that move. Not bad. It's gone up. Even though it's gone flat, it's gone up. Looks like it's going flat. So that's what I see. I like the volume, which is good. Half a mil earnings are nice. Showing it's undervalued. Pretty cheap. So we're looking at a difference of 52 week low to 52 week high. So that's at least a $17 difference earnings i like here definitely covers the dividend so that's good checks the box so we're gonna look at the analysis on the chart so i said like on an uptrend so we're gonna look at 2021 estimates if they have so nope only have 2020 
Uh, so we won't look at that. But again, we'll still look at revenue and net income. Revenue has exploded. Net income has exploded a lot too. So we're going to look at the dividends for this one. So this one, they look again, a penny. They look like there's an increase there. Dividend increase to a penny. It's better than nothing. It's not my cup of tea, but um, somewhat of a raise is better than no kind of raise. So, yeah. Uh, I like this stock just uh, technically I do like this stock looks like a, I, I mean it's not really dropping much you know so if we were to do here so over the past 30 months so let's say around 35.75 it's only dropped about three bucks so from 35 to 32 the last three months so a three dollar difference in the last three months that's definitely not bad as you can see here it has not gone under the 200 moving average which is really really good it has not gone under this line which is good and it's keeping up with the 50 ma which is really really good so this is definitely a stock to watch if you're day trading and you're feeling bullish. Um, again, you're not really going to get much. So as you can see here, let's look at the last month or the last five days. So we're talking about uh, 34 to 35 cent. Sorry, 35 34 to 35 dollar move this whole week so we're looking about averaging a dollar a dollar move which is pretty good in a in a downtrend market especially right now we're in a situation like that so as you can see here at least a 50 cent move so that's good so overall uh I like this stock for short, sorry, short term, short term only. So I'd say short term only, obviously a few months, nothing more than a year. So the stock seems okay. But long term, long term, I'd say no. I'm sorry about that. Yawning, I'm tired. So next one up, DXF Dung Dunxin Financial. Oh gosh, horrible. Seventy one cents. What am I gonna do with seventy one cents? Somebody please explain that to me. Uh, awful. It's, yeah, it's just, just the price alone doesn't even want to make me look at it. Just horrendous. I'm going to say no right off the bat. Next one up, beef in. Bank Financial Corp. I like the volume. Uh, the 52 week difference is a $3 difference. So we have it here 12 and 9. Uh, can this cover this? Yes, it can. So now we have the dividend yield at 3.72. The chart looks pretty good. That's not bad. So on the Weeble, it's showing a wedge formation. I don't know what to think of it, but it seems to be holding up in a downtrend market. So I'd say that's still pretty good. Uh, 
we have we have total let's look at 2021 estimates if we have so we have revenue gone up then we have net income kind of dropped the past three years so then we have looks like there's debt has gone up since 2019 And the interesting thing is, this is only like a 3% move from here to here. That's only... Yeah, that's only a 3% move. And look at the dividends. Still paying the same dividends, same amount. So for this one, I'm going to say, I'm going to say watch list it just because it's been holding up pretty good for the year. Next one up, CBFV. So the chart has been going up. Financials, I guess, have been doing good for some reason lately. Uh, again, uptrend, see that. Do we have 2021 estimates? We do. Not bad. Earnings at 2.1. Let's look at the info. EPS. So now the difference between the 52-week results. We are looking at a s 8. Yeah, I was going to say 6, but it's 8 dollar difference so can this cover this yes it can so now we have the dividends to look at consistent dividend paying company only 24 cents so it looks like they've been holding up like i said and still in an uptrend which is weird. So not bad. I would say watch list. But again, it seems like some banking companies are starting to be the favorite. Next one up, N-E-W-T-L. This one is New Tech business services yeah, yeah. Uh, wow this looks very inactive flat line yeah um so i mean this was on my list but it looks very inactive so i definitely say no to this one I'm not even having any data at all as you can see there it almost looks like it's gotten delisted recently. Yeah, I don't have nothing on the profile, no info, no nothing. So yeah, stay away from this stock. Next up, BCH, Bank from Chile. So uptrend, it's still pretty flat for the most part. And again, uh, banking companies are still doing that. So we're going to look at the analysis for that. Am I looking at this correctly? For some reason, this is a $10 billion company, so that's a small cap. But then for the currency... The currency for this South American bank, they are actually a $2.6 trillion company. So, 
goes to show they are very expensive. Their EPS is at... It's weird. It's only $20 a share. But they're showing they're in the trillions as a value. So we have them at 91% debt. They should definitely be paying rising dividends. If they're not, it's going to be a shock. Actually, it looks like they lowered the dividends. Wow. Yeah, you can see it from 2013 all the way. So 3.3, 3.6, and 2.5. Nothing over three the past five years. That looks awful. Uh, let's see if they have any splits. Even then, it still looks awful. And again, only a $10 difference in the 52 week high and low. So I'm going to say no. I mean, it seemed okay at first, but going over the numbers, it's awful. Next one up is WTBA. So WTBA. I'm. Even though it looks volatile, it looks kind of flat from here. So we have, oh, it's barely touching the 200. Wow. So this one's starting to kind of flat, to go flat slowly. I don't know if you guys see this. Let me draw the line. So yeah. Starting to see it go like this. And then it just kind of went down and then like that. That's what I see. If you guys agree with me on that. If not, comments, questions. Always welcome. So they can definitely cover the dividend. So now 52 week difference. We're going to see that from 21. So we're looking at a 13. Looking at a 13 dollar difference. So we're going to look at the analysis. Let's see what they say. Net income it's about the same. Revenues slightly gone up. Debt slightly gone up. Uh, so they have raised the dividend. So you can see here 2020 to 2021. Raised it again in 2021 by what? Two cents. Um, Decent raise compared to other banks, but I bet there are other banks that are better. So we're going to say no to this one as well. Uh, even though it's showing that it's undervalued, but the volume is awful as well. So yeah, we're going to say no to this one. Next up we have is SSBI. So that one looks kind of flat. Volume's really low. And the difference in 52 weeks is $11. That's not much. That doesn't say a lot. So... I mean, in a way, if it's not going up or down much, I mean, it's hard to say because people want capital gains, but then also it could have been going up really fast during a certain month and then all of a sudden a few months later or the same month, it's just kind of gone down. So let's look at the one year chart. 
you see this is exactly what I'm talking about so around September it went up and then you can see here back around here to even out so November so we're talking about definitely the full month of October so late September to October so that whole one month period it went up about uh let's say four bucks it's not much but if you're day trading um yeah or swing trading even at that uh it's still pretty decent so we're looking at the 2021 estimates Sorry, the results actually, they're not estimates because they fully reported already. So net income has gone up. I like the way it's going up. It's like, it's not even like kind of like slowly going up. I like that. And then I like this curve, this little curve here kind of going up, like, you know what I mean? Like kind of like almost taking off. That's pretty good to see for revenue um, the past two years. Actually, right here, right here, it's, I kind of see a big difference. These three here for the revenue, they actually kind of look the same. If I was to draw a line here, that's not much. See, now with this one, though, these two, definitely, definitely, definitely. So let's look at the chart again. I'd say no. Stock is way too cheap. Yeah, it's undervalued, but it's just the chart. Not a lot of firms like it hasn't gone up much so you if you bought this stock you would have broke even basically which ain't bad but again you want to choose a stock that has actually been consistent to hold on to its gains at least you know three to six months that will show some life in it but i guess not some people just like a stock for its dividend next up is atlo um, what's the name of the company? I want to pronounce it right. Ames or Ames National Corporation. We're going to look at the basic info. So we're talking a five dollar difference. That's not much. I'm not too crazy about it. Let's look at the analysis. Uh, what about 25 bucks it needs to break out of so we're gonna look at the financials whoops sorry about that we're gonna look at the financials so we have only one penny of a raise the financials we're gonna have that the debt, 89, ROE, ROA, margins, net margins. Love seeing net margins because that's what you're left with after everything is said and done, you know? So, net income. Revenue, net income. Yeah, not too crazy about it. Assets and liabilities and debt to asset. Nope. It's just too high. All these banks have high debt. I mean, they can get away with it, but they just make it such a habit, you know? Looks like they have negative cash flow. And again, the price is so low. It just doesn't look like 
they've gained much so you only see a five dollar difference there so i'm gonna say no to this one as well next up cnnb and we only have a few more left we only have three more after this i like this uptrend i like this chart the volume i'm not too crazy about it so the difference between the 52 week low and high is only three dollars which is awful but as you can see they've gotten up on a slight uptrend we just have to see if it can even grow more than this not like you know not like five cents a week more like five cents a day then that would be a huge dramatic difference so the analysis for this one let's see for the technical support and resistance we're talking about what 14 dollars i don't like the stock i like the chart though um uh, this looks like a definite watch list kind of stock um well at the moment i would say 82 percent debt okay all right they don't pay a dividend which is good hmm i'd say definitely watch that watch list it next one up is c band colony bank corp going up then gone flat so earnings definitely can cover the dividend we're gonna look at the analysis we see that support and resistance at around 1845 i'd say at 1844 so revenue, we're going to look at the yearly 2021 results. Nice. I like that, that curve here. I like this. It looks nice. It's taking off for revenue. Earnings. That is at 91. Let's look at the, if any, if they had any raises for dividends. So nope. You know, do raises. So from 2020 to 2021, it's just remained the same. They are known to have a lot of splits. So, I'd say no to C-Band, definitely. Just because of that reason alone with the so many splits. Next up, I have the last two. QCR holdings, so ticker symbol QCRH. We have this one at $57. Okay. Not too low and not too pricey. Not over $100, you know, so nice volume. That's a nice gain. That's what I'm talking about. So that's at least a $22 gain. And we're talking about undervalued stock. Definitely, definitely. Look at these earnings. Nice. Watch list. This has been on an uptrend. And then kind of gone flat. So we have... 2021 results we have net income revenue went down like close to 0.8 of a percent down in revenue their earnings are insane so they really jumped on their earnings from here all the way to here that's that's really big difference i mean it's funny because if somebody new first saw this and said whoa okay you know they've only got like five dollars a share 
or four fifty, sorry, for about four fifty a share. But then this one is about This one's about um at least six and a half, you know. So yeah. The debt is slightly lower than I've I've seen from other companies. So we have let's see if they have any margins. No margins. So yeah. These guys are doing something right. Look at that net income just shot up. So operating margin nothing. We have assets, liabilities. Obviously, debt is high up there too. So yeah, definitely watch list. I definitely watch list this company. So we have the very last one. MBWM Mercantile Bank Corporation. We have it going flat pretty much. Then it's gone up, then gone down, then gone up again. Probably going to go down again. <laughs> so we have 3.6 earnings. Definitely covers the dividend. We're looking at a difference from the 52 week high and low of about uh, $12 for the year. That's not bad. It could be better, but it's not bad. So we have analysis report. Looks like it's showing me it's on an uptrend. I'm gonna look at the financials. Hopefully, I have 2021 stuff. Nice. This is definitely a nice chart. And this one, too, slightly. Whoops, I messed up there, so. Yeah, you got the idea. It's it's going for the net income is slowly going up and then the revenue slowly going up. But it looks like it's doing pretty good and taking off. 91% debt. So 37.68. I'm um, just looking at other stuff. Volume. Let's look at the uh, dividend. So we have one cent, one cent, one cent. Any splits? No. So there you have it. Um, for me, I'd say no. So again, they have good earnings, and uh, I will watch listed actually. Um, long term, uh, they're okay. Earnings are doing good. The difference in price is okay. Um, I just don't like that they don't raise the dividends that much. And that's pretty much it. The debt is a little slightly high than other people, but isn't that the case for this whole sector? 
Oh, uh, so let me look at the one year chart for this one. So it's been going up last three months. It's been holding its weight flat pretty much. It looks flat. See, in the last five days, now you can see it. You can see that little breakdown. Even though it's $2, but yeah, now it's on a downtrend. So it hasn't dropped much. I def you know what? I think I watch list it. It's not bad actually. So MBWM. I'd watch list that one. So that's all we have. I reviewed, let me see, one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15. So 15 stocks in the banking sector services. Yeah, sorry. In the banking services sector. And I will continue another video later in the week. And hopefully you guys learn a thing or two. Thank you guys for watching. Like or subscribe. Um... I know even my past videos, they weren't as advanced as the ones I'm doing now. But thanks for watching, if you are watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.